The simplex algorithm, created by George Danzig during World War II, solves linear optimization problems with linear objective functions. Reduced to an algorithm, we introduce non-negative slack variables to turn the constraint inequalities into equations, include the objective function as a new linear equation. This produces a tableau. We'll let the objective function and slack variables be the basic variables, and we'll swap out variables by pivoting. The variable in the L row with the greatest negative coefficient will become a basic variable. The pivot row will be the row with the least quotient of the constant and the coefficients of that variable. And the new free variable will be the basic variable in the pivot row. The new basic variable is usually called the entering variable, while the new free variable is called the exiting variable. Row reducing using the pivot gives us a new tableau then lather, rinse, repeat. The algorithm ends when all coefficients of the L row are non-negative. There are a few times we might have to make a choice. If the L row has more than one most negative coefficient, and if there's more than one least coefficient. But remember, an algorithm has decisions, but no choices. So we need to introduce a rule for how to make a decision, and the standard rule is to use the first variable in our listing, in other words, the variable with the least index, at least for now. Now remember, the purpose of writing a process as an algorithm is that it can be given to a computer. Now, once upon a time, computers were people, but now they're devices that don't ask for a living wage or paid sick leave and they can solve problems faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any human being because they follow instructions perfectly, even if the instructions lead to nonsensical solutions or cause a computer to crash. So we need to check for ways to break the algorithm, potential problems, and how to deal with them if they come up. One potential problem is that we have to choose the least quotient. But there are two ways we could interpret least. Let's consider an example. So let's try to solve this optimization problem. Introducing slack variables and our objective function as an equation give us. And so our tableau is. In the L row, both x2 and x3 have greatest negative coefficient. Since x2 has the lower index, we'll pivot on x2, making it our entering variable. We find the quotients of the constants and the coefficients of x2. Since the quotients of the constant and the x2 coefficients are the same, we'll use the first row, again our least indexed row, so C1 is going to be our exiting variable. So row reducing gives us Now x1 has the most negative coefficient in the L row, so we'll make it our entering variable. The quotients of the constant and the x1 coefficients are So the least entry is um well is a negative number less than zero? To answer this question, remember the tableau is a representation of a system of equations, so let's see what this system represents. Remember, at this point, we want to find the greatest possible value of our entering variable that's consistent with the constraints. So we'll let the other three variables be zero, but keep x1. Our first two rows give us the equations. And so our other variables will be. Now, since x2 and c2 must be greater than or equal to 0, this is going to require. And this is where our quotients come from. Now, since x1 is non-negative, our first bound is always satisfied. Consequently, this won't give us a meaningful bound on the entering variable. 
The second will give us a meaningful bound, so we'll use the second row as our pivot, making c2 our exiting variable and new free variable. Should we worry that the bound is zero? Well, yes, but we'll worry about that later. So row reducing gives us... Now, it might not be obvious, but an interesting thing has happened. Notice that our previous tableau gave us L equals 30. But this tableau gives us L equals 30, and we haven't increased L. This shouldn't be too surprising. In the previous tableau, our basic feasible solution L equals 30 came from x1 equals 0 as a free variable, but in this tableau, our second row gives us 21x1 equals 0, so we still have x1 equal to 0. Now, while the value of L hasn't changed, some other things have. x1 is now a basic variable, and L has been rewritten in terms of the new free variables, so we can proceed. Now x3 has the most negative coefficient in the L row, and as before, this quotient with negative denominator means that as long as x3 is greater than or equal to 0, x1 will also be greater than or equal to 0. So we'll pivot on the first row in the x3 column, making x2 the entering variable and x2 the exiting variable. And now, no entry in the L row is negative, so we can't increase L any further. Setting our free variable to 0 makes our L row, and so we have 